not sure if anyone's on yet. everybody. What's going on? I am Nick Reynolds from Mill Porty and we're going to do um, two Caribbean dishes today. Um, we're going to do a, a mackerel rundown first. Uh, interestingly enough, mackerel has not come into Dublin in the last, in the last couple of weeks. Uh, the seas have been a bit choppy, so I have some mackerel here, but it's smoked mackerel. But the beauty thing about this recipe is you can use it for there's variations of it around the Caribbean. In Jamaica, it, it's one of the only Jamaican dishes actually that has uh, very little African influence because it's what you find on the island. It is mackerel and coconut mixed into a broth, so it's beautiful. But in, in Nicaragua, you have a version of it where they use tortoise. Uh, in Colombia, they have a version of it where they use snails. So uh, it's quite versatile. It's actually a great sauce to use with um, mussels as well. I used it with mussels a couple of weeks ago, some shredded coconut in there, some rose pepper going through it. It's, it's beautiful. Now, we're just going to get started as it's 7 o'clock. Um, and the next big dish is the Calypso pork, um, which is an interesting dish because if you ever used uh, pineapple before as a marinade, um, it's got, it's, I don't always recommend it because uh, it has an enzyme in it called bromelain. And basically what bromelain does is, so to speak, it just tears apart the meat. So it's a great meat tenderizer. I'll show you how to make that. But first we'll start with the uh, macro rundown. And it is quite a simple dish. I'm just saying hi there. Hi guys. <laughs> uh, it is quite a simple dish, but um, it's a nice dish to get the variations of how to use Caribbean flavours because you you start off flavouring the oil, you're going to have to make a coconut custard, which are two words that are fantastic. Uh, coconut and custard. Um, and then using the fish over to steam it. Um, I haven't done it today, but I normally use uh, I'd use fresh coconut and shred it. What I do is I boil it down in a bit of water and then uh, squeeze it out and it's it's coconut. First thing you need to do is what three variations of coconut milk milk here. I don't know if you've ever looked on the back of your coconut milk, but it's gonna have coconut extract. This one is 53%. This one is what is that? 60%. The most pure coconut you'll probably get in the shops is coconut cream. I'm not going to use it today, but I just wanted to, I just wanted to show you that because uh, this is basically pure coconut. It's, kind of, it's sort of dehydrated uh, slightly, but just rehydrated with a bit of water and it's pure coconut. Most of the canned stuff you get is, um, is going to be coconut extract. It's going to be a variation of coconut extract. First thing you need to do, get your coconut milk. I'm using this one because it's 63% uh, coconut milk. Like, the rest of it really is just flavoured water, it's coconut flavoured water. Um, so next time you're buying coconut milk, just have a little look at the back. So, you get your coconut milk first, and just put it in a pan. Put it in a pan. And put that on like a medium setting, because we're gonna make a custard and we're gonna, we're gonna try to cream it up a little bit and just get as much of the water, uh, as much of the water um, out of it as possible. There's a few questions here, aren't there? Sound is really low. Excuse me. Sound better? Is the sound better there? Ugh. People saying the sound is really low. Is the sound better there? Can you hear me now? Be like Daniel O'Donnell and Magella from the other day. <laughs> yeah, 
Perfect, good stuff. Uh, so I was just, if you didn't hear me, what I was saying there the last time is, uh, have a look at the back of your coconut milk always, because sometimes it can be, well, most of the time, the coconut milk is going to be coconut extract. And the thing about coconut extract is, it's basically flavored coconut water. If you can find it, if you can see it, a lot of the uh, Asian markets will have this, is co creamed coconut, and this is 100% pure. So it's always better. So just to say what I was going back on before, we're gonna do a macro rundown. Now, just to get the basics of what Caribbean cooking is, it's a lot about the, the spices and flavoring the oils. So there's gonna be a bit of spice, there's gonna be a bit of sweetness, um, and it's all gonna come together in like a creamy tomato coconut broth, which is fantastic. Now, you don't always have to use macro. I've used it with mussels before. Uh, in Colombia, they use it with snails. In Nicaragua, there's a version of it where they even um, eat it with tortoise, which is quite interesting. So, first thing you want to do is heat up our coconut milk. I'm going to heat it up for about 10 15 minutes until it thickens and becomes all nice. We're going to do some beautiful things to it. Now, I'm going to get our onions, and we're going to just prepared some here before. I'm going to chop them all up. So, our onion. First, so just, just prepare this to make it all nice. I'm just going to need one onion really. And get another pan and start to heat it up to a low to medium heat. Has anybody got the playlist on by the way? those jams on. Now, if you haven't got the scotch bonnet, so the scotch bonnet pepper is about, I think it's about 300,000 on the Scoville scale, so you're looking at maybe 50 times hotter than the jalapeno. Um, so, if you got it, you're, again, it doesn't have, sorry, point the knife at you. It doesn't have to be a uh, scotch bonnet pepper. You use in chili, but the thing about the scotch bonnet pepper is it's got this incredible sweetness to it that, um, if you use it right and you learn to start practicing with chilies and how to manage spice, you can really get it. What you want to do, and this doesn't go just for this dish, is you just want to put a little incision in it. Just like make a little cut, you can see that. Just a little, little cuts all over, all over. And in your pan, just put a little bit of oil. Just put a little bit of oil on the on the pan and then put that in cold. And so with your yellow pepper now you want to chop it up and just completely de -seed it. It doesn't have to be too nice, it doesn't have to be too um, to refine, but you're, you're going to want to chop it up as best, you, as best you can. It doesn't have to be, doesn't have to be in any way uh, presentable because we're going to blend it up after. So just a bit of salt and pepper on the, um, on the yellow pepper and you're golden. Put it in, it's gonna, this is going to be done in about six or seven minutes. You're not really looking to cook it, you're just really, you just want to take the rawness out of it slightly. So put your, Peppers in. Now, I don't know if you can see this yet, but the I don't think you can see this just yet, but the uh, pepper is just starting to heat up in the pan. So what you're looking to so what you're looking to do is basically just flavor the oil. Um, you don't want to break the bonnet because the peppers are incredibly, incredibly hot. So just try to treat this with a bit of respect. <sighs> the amount of times, actually no, I'm not really, recently I got some in my eye and I was alone and I've never wanted a hug so badly. It just, it just gets in your eye and there's not a lot you can do about it except for wait. So try to be careful with these peppers. So you're gonna put that in with the oil and you're just gonna let it heat up. I'm gonna move this a bit closer as well. Ugh. So you can all hear me. Now, the 
So with your time as well, you've got two, two sprigs of thyme. What you're gonna do is you put that in with the coconut milk as it's uh, reducing over here. As, see this, this, is starting to, this coconut milk is starting to make a bit of noise now. So, so we have our, Tomatoes. Listen, uh, with a lot of Jamaican recipes, you don't have to be exact. If you like a bit of spice, throw in more spice. If you want more garlic, throw in more garlic. If you don't, it's it's all about your balance and what you want to do with your food. Far be it from me to tell you how to eat. <laughs> so we're gonna get our tomatoes, our onion, and our spring onion. Green, the green part, all of it. I'm just going to chop it up and mix it together. Just mix it all in together. Nice, like that. And just let that, and just, if the, the scotch bonnet on the, the pan with a little bit of oil, just let it sit there. It's nice. It's going to make your, it's going to leave this lasting taste in your mouth because the thing with the scotch bonnet pepper is it, um, it's like an afterburner. It doesn't initially tie a type of meat. You'll be eating your food and then three or four or maybe eight bites in, you realize, you're just, hey, this is spicy as well, but the brain sends a message already that you've got a bit of sweetness in it, so you're all kind of, you're good to go with it. So, now, it brings us to our, our next guy. This is the, oh, there's a noise over here. Your allspice. Allspice pepper. I, I, I will call it the pimento pepper. That is the fundamental basis of Jamaican cooking. Mm, pretty much every dish that you can name from Jamaica probably has a little bit, little spice of pimento in it. Um, the pimento is an interesting one known as allspice obviously, but it's because it's got a touch of clove, it's got a touch of cinnamon, and it's got a touch of nutmeg. So it kind of has the basis of all three flavors there. So you can use it in, um, in desserts as well, it's great. Fantastic for everything. Technically, if you don't have an ingredient, you can't call your food jerk. So there we go. So I wanna chop our garlic as well now. There's a thing I, I do, but I, I I always see people do it the opposite direction. What I do is I get my pan to like a medium heat, and then I take it off the heat. You can see it here. See you see see the pepper here there. Now he's flavored up the oil. What I do is I usually put my garlic in first. put the garlic in first and it's not going to burn because there's enough residual in heat to, uh, residual heat to release all the oils and the flavor and all the goodness that we want so move him around and as the pan cools down the garlic's not going to burn and the oil is going to be flavored by another little layer I really want to try this with tur 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 has anybody ever eaten turtle? <laughs> I once heard a story about um, there was a giant gi giant tortoises um, we're in like the age of exploration when um, England were bringing all their their artifacts and um, their the, the samples from around the world you know the age of G Charles Darwin they were they were trying to bring um, giant the giant tortoise back to exhibits in England and what kept happening was someone discovered that the giant tortoise was so incredibly delicious that every time they tried to bring, bring one back, it got eaten en route. They tried numerous amount of times and uh, they just couldn't bring them back because, I mean, you know, you're probably at sea for, what, like three or four, could be like, I don't know, two months, and there's this slow little arthropod walking around. You're gonna have a little, a grilled tortoise. Anybody ever tried it? 
Yeah, that's what it's like. So, after the garlic has started to uh, sizzle down again, put it back on your heat. Now, with your allspice berries, always give them a little toasting first. Every seed you do, just toast it first. It's, it makes such a difference to your meal. Now, I'm going to toast these. I'm going to grind these bad boys up. Now, I'm going to bring this back here. This will be the time to add all your ingredients now. Tomato, onion, spring onion, throw it all in there. There we go. Also, leave the scotch bonnet in there. I'll show, I'll show you why after. I, with, with my grandmother, um, you walk into her kitchen all the time and get that back on the heat. With my grandmother, when you walk into her kitchen, because I learned a lot of all my uh, cooking and the kind of how to use the flavor, especially the spice from my grandmother. And you'd walk into her kitchen and there would be, uh, there'd always be just like on the side of the, uh, of the pots she'd taken out the bottom because she doesn't really like the thing is what i want to get into a lot of people's mind is the difference between spiced food and spicy food spicy food is you're gonna wreck your you're gonna wreck your meal you want it to be nice and spiced so this is this is just a, a nice little trick how to do it there. see there you see in there i've left the, the scratch bonnet at home so now give it a bit of season And with the, um, with the pimento, there's, so a lot of Jamaican cooking obviously has its roots in slave cooking. Um, whatever's around, whatever's there, um, why, why you see a lot of uh, fish, especially in the Caribbean, is it was forbidden for the enslaved to eat meat. And that's why a lot of the dishes, especially like something like oxtail, is the, 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 the leftover parts that were given to the enslaved. So. That's why you kind of see the, 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 the use of different spices is because a lot of them were probably getting rotting meat um, left over. So what I do with my pimento and my spices is uh, I make something called kitchen pepper and I use it instead of black pepper, like pimento. Um, I, use like, I like to use lime zest and orange zest as well, which is a beautiful mixture. It goes with everything you can think of. So I'm going to add your allspice now. I hope you're all, I hope you're all listening to that playlist by as well. Ooh. Now, and I'm dancing away. And if you've got any suggestions for it as well, or something I've missed out, send them along. Now, by now, your coconut milk should have reduced a little bit. Look at that, little coconut custard. I mean, I'm just kind of smelling this. It's like I'd say a little, I'd say a little bit of tortoise would be, would be all right with it, right? They, they do that in Nicaragua. In Colombia, they do snails. I actually have some snails in there. I might try with snails another day. This sauce is great. Now, I mean, like it's made for it with uh, mussels. So, ugh. now what we want to do is uh, our peppers. That have been taken home in the oven. So I want to take them out. And we're going to pop them into our blender. Mm. Just going to blitz them. Also, you could do it with cod. I did, I've done it with cod with raw. To, to be honest, it goes with everything. I mean, it's, it's, it's great. Now, so 
for the Blitzer Peppers, this is going to be a bit noisy for a second. If you ever look to do uh, try a, a Jamaican dance, there's one called the Dutty Wine. It, uh, it's actually quite easy. It's like it involves, uh, like you get in here, you get some involves it in the, uh, I think it's where the, uh, the kind of back arching twerking came from. It's, it's quite primal, it's great. <laughs> Now, your spring onions, your spring onions, your um, tomato, that mix should be making some real good noise by now. Uh, which you're, and then you're going to add your yellow pepper paste now to it as well. And the idea for this is we want to get it, we want to get it nice and thick. You want to, you want all, you want all those juices to kind of run out to it. I'm gonna. So here we have it. Look at that. It's all nice and thick. Now, if it turns out too thick, you can just add a tiny bit of water. Absolutely no issue. Now, what you're going to do now is pretty much the final part. Just put your, your layer, your mackerel over it, over the top, which I'm going to do now. And then you're going to turn it up to like a medium to high heat and let that mackerel sizzle. Not sizzle, steam. We want it to steam together. Um, so the steam's gonna rise, cook the mackerel, and then you're gonna have a, a nice little mackerel and coconut broth. Yeah. So, uh, so everything that's gonna question there, everything that's in the pan for, from, from right now is, Give the, here's the, the, the step by step and where you should be at now. So first, you're going to from like on, on, on when you're turning your pan to um, turning it on first, you, you're going to have your coconut milk reducing and we want to reduce that into like a, a custard. It's going to take about six, six, six to eight minutes just to reduce and uh, get it thicken up. And then you're going to put your thyme in that. So that's to one side. Then on your, on your pan, put the scotch bonnet in first with the oil. So what we're trying to do here is inf infuse the oil together with the chili, which is, it, it's one of the, it's, it's the best way in my opinion to use a chili. I, I'm not really too much of a fan of having hot sauce on the side. Well, I am on the side, but over, over everywhere. Volume still low. Is that better? There 
we go. Is that is that better now? Can you see? Can you hear? Can you all hear me? I'm just going to presume you can. <laughs> so then, first we're going to the Scotch bonnet pepper is going to go in first because you're, you're looking to flavor the oil first. So you'll do that for until it starts to sizzle, basically, and then. Goodness. No change in volume. I'm really not sure what to do here now. Um, is the volume better now? Daniel, oh, this is like Daniel or Donald or Magella all over again. Hannah saying, yep. So, I'll let's go back, and then you're looking to just flavor the oil with the uh, with the Scotch bonnet. <sighs> Can never be a smooth live live broadcasting. All right, Emer, I'm, I'm doing as I'm told. <laughs> So you're looking to flavor the oil, um, which, I, like, for me, I actually do it with almost everything I cook. I just put a little bit, little uh, full of chili in there and just let the heat come up and rise above it. Then at the same time, you're going to add the tomatoes, the spring onion, and the uh, the onion all together, and we're going to cook that down for about six minutes, and then your roasted peppers, you blend them, add that in again. Give a little seasoning with the allspice and the salt, and then uh, let it uh, mix that down again. Add your coconut milk, and then put, place the mackerel over the top. And we're going to let that steam for about. We're going to have to let that steam for about six to ten minutes, or until the mackerel's cooked. So steam fish doesn't take too long. I would recommend if you have a, a pot or a, a lid to cover your pot or pan. Perfect. And you could do it with tin foil as well if you don't. Some a lot of the, the uh, saucepans do not have a, a pan, so try it with tin foil. Let that sizzle. It's fun, funny. This one, I've this dish is uh, it's great, but um, traditionally eaten for breakfast. And for breakfast, you would eat it with uh, green bananas and a a fruit that you you've probably never seen called aki and um, you can get it in cans in some places I rarely 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 see it in Ireland but uh, it, I used to have it at the restaurant but it's um it's like a mixture of it's like a mixture of it's, it's like a type of avocado um, it kind of has a it looks exactly like a scrambled egg and it has a consistency of like the, a mouthfeel of avocado so this is a this is really a breakfast dish but it's a great starter and again with the sauce it is perfect for a uh, mussels, mussels as well. Just pass the mussels through it. This coconut custard, the the, the, the spices from the, uh, the Scotch bonnet pepper, the pepperiness from the uh, the allspice. It's a it's a complimentary dish. So you're gonna let that all steam together, and you should come up with something that looks a little bit like this. I'm gonna plate it up now. Again, with Jamaican cooking, <laughs> nothing is refined. So, here we go, our mackerel hunt. And if you're, again, if, you're, if your sauce is a bit too, um, too, th too thick for your liking, just add a little bit of water. Because again, as I said, some people may not have heard me before, but with the coconut milk, especially with the canned coconut milk, a lot of that is, a lot of that is water. So, uh, just have a look out for that next time. Yeah. Here we go. That is our. Still can see the steam coming off of that. Look at it. That is our our mackerel rundown. Now.
every single oh the spice in this man. Every <laughs> every single time I have it, I just I just I just think mussels. I think it's would be a perfect I think it'd be a perfect sauce with or I know it's a perfect sauce with mussels. Um if you want to try this again or with the um with that sauce, tr try with a little bit of uh, white wine and maybe pass it through so, uh, so I keep saying mussels, but some some mussels. This is why in Colombia they eat it with snails. This is actually starting to make sense because um the snail is a type of mollusk, so Yeah, this is a simple dish, but <coughs> what, what, I, what I'd like to, people to take away from doing a dish like this is the, um, the use of the spice. Because um, anytime, anytime people come into the restaurant, they're, they're, they're expecting a lot of spice, and they're, 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 there's a slight misconception with um, how we view and eat spice, especially in uh, Latin Republic. Food should be spiced, not spicy. If you're gonna get a hot sauce and throw it all over your food, like you're just gonna ruin your food and you're probably gonna insult the chef. But um, you know, that's it's far far be it from me to tell you how to eat anything or anything food. Just use your hands if you can. Well, my COVID time. Um, yeah, try that sauce. It's really good. It's simple. The coconut custard brings it together. The spice as well is if you can find your balance with spice, I'd recommend just upping upping your your spice tolerance. But when I say spice tolerance, I mean start using uh, chilies that might be a bit hotter or just a little bit outside your comfort zone. Because what you're going to find with a lot of the hotter peppers is they've got this incredible sweetness behind them that. I think it's such a shame not to try just because you've got a, a you, you may maybe you've eaten something spicy and I don't know, you see you say never am I doing that to, my, uh, to myself again. So try just use the whole chili whole, put it in a stew, put put, put it in soup, put it in stock. It's like a background flavor. It's just this kind of little vibration that makes you feel all nice and warm. So that's the macro rundown. Also, it'd be great. It's a great pasta sauce as well. So I use a lot of coconut milk instead of mayonnaise. I um because I'm I'm actually I'm lactose intolerant, so I find using the coconut milk is a lot better than um, using things like butter. So I use for a, a simple recipe for a mayonnaise alternative is uh, coconut milk and avocado together. So good. Yeah. We're gonna move on to. I'll eat this later. Ooh. I'm gonna move on to the pork calypso. So, pork calypso is um, actually it's a recipe from uh, Granada, another um, Caribbean island. Um, but the thing with a lot of the Caribbean recipes is that there's like, like there is a cute, there is a bit of variation in what they use. For example, like let's say Trinidad and Tobago and um, Jamaica, Trinidad and Tobago had a really big Indian uh, population. So you'd see a lot of <coughs> Indian influenced cooking in their, in their uh, use. You'd see a lot of turmeric, you would see um, rotis, um, you'd see curries. And, uh, you, you know, yeah, uh, this is my whole thing, my, my, my philosophy about especially the cooking I make, because I'm half Jamaican and I'm half Irish. So I try to I try to think back on all these cultural heritages and you know there's there's always a like when exactly does food become authentic? You know let's 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 talk about something from Ireland. Um, we claim the potato as our own. There must have been like a twenty year period where someone was holding a potato up and going, what am I? What is this? Do I, do I throw it? And now, you know, 400 years, what was it, 1598 was uh, the first recorded, and now it's the most, it's synonymous with Ireland. So, there's a point in cuisine where this happens, and then, like, the, the Italian tomato, the tomatoes are from Peru, potatoes are from Peru. So, how f it's interesting how food just moves around the world. So, interestingly enough, the second biggest ethnicity in Jamaica is Irish, which is uh, on account of Cromwell, he, a few things. I'm just going to clean up here for to so we're going to move on to the pork calypso. Pork 
to lips up hot. Now, this dish as well can be done with chicken. And as I was saying earlier about the pineapple, I rarely marinate with pineapple, but it does, and I'll, I'll tell you why. Pineapple has a, do I mean vibes? Pineapple has a, an, an enzyme in it called uh, bromelain. And basically what bromelain does is like it's a meat tenderizer. So I, if you're ever using pineapple as a marinade, I don't recommend it doing, doing it over, maybe overnight, but not more than about 12 hours because the, by the time you get your meat back, it's just gonna fall apart. So when I do uh, with pineapple, I tenderize it, and I, but I'm actually only gonna leave it in there for maybe an hour, maybe two hours, um, especially with something like a pork chop because it's, it's quite thin. Um, I'm not looking to do the flavors, the, the, the bromelain in the, uh, in the pineapple is gonna get all the way through. And again with the bromelain is, the majority of it's actually in the skin. So, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna blend the, all of it, the whole thing. It's not gonna go in the food, it's just to tenderize the pork chop. So I'm gonna blend this first. Get your pineapple blended and go get your pork chop. So we've got our, got our pork chop here. Oh. And anytime you're cooking a pork chop, you're gonna get the uh, the little pieces of fat on it. All I've done is just cut them down, right? So while you're with the pork chop, turn on your, uh, your pot and peel your sweet potatoes, leave them on with the skin uh, until they're fork tender. So we're gonna do that. You're gonna uh, boil them for, until they're fork tender. It takes about 10, 15 minutes. Um, and at the, at the same time, your garlic, the five cloves, we're gonna put them in some tin foil. A tiny drizzle of olive oil, and then a handful of parsley inside and uh, roast that together. From there, we're, go we're gonna make like a, a garlicky sweet potato mash with that. That's gonna be on the base of the pork, pineapple running through it. And we're gonna cover this in our creamy raw or our coconut and raw rum sauce, right? So we have our pork chop here. First thing you're going to do to your pork chop. Is you're going to cover it in everything. So this the pineapple with the skin. Don't be, don't be, um, doesn't matter about the skin because we're not going to, we're not actually going to eat the skin. This, the pineapple and the bromelain, the enzyme, are going to tenderize the meat. Essentially going to tenderize the meat. Um, as I said before, don't. There's no real point in doing this for more than <coughs> for more than more than 12 hours. Um, you're just going to ruin the meat. The, the bromelain is because you know when you get um, you only get pineapple juice and you drink it and you get, like you get these ah, you get these like tingles in the, uh, the top of your mouth. That's the uh, the bromelain in action. It's it's essentially eating your mouth. <laughs> now. So we have our pork chop here, just covered in the pineapple juice. This will be the time to just add a bit of rum, a bit of rum over it. I've got some dark rum. That just needs a couple of splashes, really. I'm gonna add my um, my pepper to it as well. Just gonna throw it over that in there. Nice. 
And a sugar that I always use, which I always find uh, just to put it at the best there, it's not because I just love coconut, is coconut sugar. It is, um, I wouldn't use it in tea or anything like that, but it's a per the perfect kind of sugar because it's not too sweet, but it caramelizes beautifully. So we're going to use that later just to, to sear our pork chops. Now, with our, so for the coconut cream, or the, uh, the, uh, the rum cream. But you want to start off a little bit of oil in your pan or saucepan. Just a little bit of oil. And you're going to get your uh, shallots. Reduce down to uh, just to just just to a translucency. Now, if you're trying this uh, pork, um, the perfect the perfect point for me with with the with the calypso pork is probably about forty five minutes to an hour. Um, again, as I said, you don't want the, you don't want the meat to be broken down too much. It's just to add just to make it that bit more tender and juicy. Nobody's answering me about the music. Are you? Are you guys listening to the music? You got the playlist? I know. I know. So I know. So I know. Someone added themselves to it. So your potatoes, after 10 minutes, obviously going to be boiled. What we're going to do is get our uh, get our our nice garlic that's been roasted. Yeah, push that in together. We're going to add our parsley. that all in together. This dish actually is perfect with, if you've ever come or if you know what it is, some cultures call it mandioca, some call it cassava, um, other cultures call it yuca, but it's all the same. It's kind of that like rooty uh, vegetable that you walk by and go, what? What is that? Do people eat that? It's a root vegetable. If you've ever tried cooking with that, just treat it like you would with a potato. It is, I can't describe over this medium the crispiness that you can get that vegetable to. It is incredible with steaks. Like it would, like the uh, like get maybe get like a, a vet and put the uh, the mandioca over it. It is the crispiest vegetable you'll probably you'll probably ever see. It's, there's a couple of things with, with my Irishness and my Jamaican, there's a couple of like, there's a couple of trade-offs I definitely made, like, people ask me is it plantain or plantain or potato, and it's definitely plantain, like, if I'm ever convicted of some sort of heinous crime or something, hopefully not, but the plantain is going to be my last meal, just plantain, fry, a little bit of salt, and man, I'm good to go. We can leave our our mash with our garlic and parsley. If you want to add a bit of butter to it, 
by all means. If you want to add a little bit of chicken stock into it, it'll be nice as well. But now, now you've got the sweet potato and you're done. You're done with that aspect. So we're going to get our, our shallots that have been reducing down nicely now. And then this is the time to add your nutmeg to it. So again, once that's reduced down a tiny bit, now is the time to add your rum. It's going to sort of like deglaze the... You hear that? Are you listening to that? Rum time. Yeah, so cooking with rum, it's... Um, history behind rum, obviously, in the Caribbean is... Uh, a lot of Caribbean islands in the enslaved population, they, they, the biggest commodity was sugar. And the thing with sugar is why the slave trade was particularly harsh down in that, that part of the world was sugar needs to be cut. When it's, when it's uh, cut, it needs to be harvested really, really, really quickly or else it just rots. Well, well like one of the, uh, the byproducts of the rotting sugar is rum, obviously. But the... I, th I think you have to. You, you, you've, you've got very few hours before it starts to disintegrate, so that's why the um, the Caribbean islands that have put the, the slave trade down there was particularly harsh. You're working in the hot sun all day. And working for something you don't want to do. Now, this is the time to add um, your coconut milk as well. Open up the oh, quick tip on coconut milk actually. If you're looking for the, 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 the like to get 100%, just remember there as I was opening it. If you're ever looking to get like 100% uh, coconut milk out of, as, as I said with the, um, the coconut extract, if you're ever looking to get a 100% uh, coconut milk, like a coconut cream, leave the can in the fridge and all the water will actually uh, sink to the bottom. So when you, and then don't shake it. So, so when you open it up again, it is, uh, it's like uh, all the cream is at the top and you can scoop that out and you got yourself some coconut cream. Now, we get with our pork chop here covered in pineapple. So what you want to do basically is just scrape as much of it as you can off. Not all of it, but most of it. And then you're just gonna, I'm just gonna tilt this down so you can see what I'm doing here. Way there. No problem. So, like our pork chop here. Just wanna, you just wanna pat it down as much as we can off. I'm gonna oil the pan because you're gonna sear this quite high now. Once the uh, rum has just reduced down, you can see it in there. Just add your add your chicken stock just a tiny bit at a time. You don't want to oversaturate it. Now back to our pork chop. As I was saying, with the coconut sh with this coconut sugar, like I, I can't actually recommend this. I, I know I'm using coconut for everything, but. It's just such a versatile gift on this planet, is the coconut. I mean, it has everything. Coconut water, coconut milk, coconut cream, a pina colada, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Anyway, uh, get your coconut sugar and, or, or your brown sugar. I'm using coconut sugar because I really enjoy it, but use uh, your brown sugar and just cover the pork chop in the sugar. 
to make sure all of it's gotten down there. It's gonna make a, it's gonna make a really nice sizzle. It's gonna make it really nice. Um, uh, give it a really nice crust, you know. So your your so to go back to the cream now, your shallots and Roman chicken stock just a, just a tiny bit at the start maybe just about fifty mils first. Um, you're just passing it through. So then you're gonna add your your coconut milk and then let that just like the mackerel run down. If you're watching there, if you've joined us now, just let it thicken down to like a, a, a coconut custard. How many times have I said custard <laughs> or coconut? cream sauce there. Now add your time to add your spices as well. The nutmeg, a little bit of thyme. If you're feeling like it, uh, cinnamon as well would be great. Goes great with pork. Like what I'd like to see definitely is there's that kind of cuisine, especially right. You see it a lot in um, slave roots cooking. Is well, I suppose it's it's everywhere. It's just you use what you got around you. You can't you can't you can't be too uh, too extravagant. Now, we left one guy out, our ginger. Same again as we did with the, uh, the scotch bonnet before. Just see that, just cut. You don't have to peel it or anything. Just cut your slices like that. And then just put them straight into your pan. As we said before, we're looking to flavor the oil first. Oops, can you see this? Now, now ginger is quite robust, so you you don't have to you don't have to be take that care of it. Just don't let it burn. Anything that burns just gets a little bit bitter, you know. Now a lovely piece of pork. Look at this. Make sure the uh, sugar has just gotten all over it. So uh, a history of um, the pigs in the Caribbean, they were brought over first by the, the Spanish. So there's, that's why it's the, the pork is probably the most common, uh, hello. <laughs> so pork is probably the most common meat that you'll see all in all the, Car the Caribbean islands. Weren't a lot of cows, goat quite popular, but um, the pig is probably the most popular. and. So after maybe five, six minutes of just kind of constantly moving the ginger around, you can leave it in there if you'd like, but get your pork chop and make some noise. So there's gonna be a bit of sizzle there, so I'm just gonna to come to the uh, camera a bit louder. So with uh, pork in Caribbean cooking, it's, it's got a quite an interesting story. So mother side of my family are uh, Jamaican, and um, I am a li I'm, a, a, I'm from a lineage uh, called Maroon, and uh, the Maroon is a tribe in Jamaica that um, es escapes uh, slavery. And there were two wars against the British. To um, they escaped to the mountains and they started their own communes. They started their own towns, uh, their own settlements. But uh, jerk pork, uh, the famous jerk cooking, comes from when the enslaved started mixing with the indigenous populations and they created this whole new flavor, this whole new world of imagination and, and spices and everything else. They used to cook the, the meat underground. So you'd see that in Hawaii, you see that in the Middle East, you see that in a lot of different countries. We see it in Ireland, well, like the, like the full fia. Um, but that's how the, uh, the pork came to Jamaica. Um, yeah. So every time your coconut cream starts to bubble, just add a little bit more chicken stock. Uh, just bring it a bit closer now. Now, 
and we got our coconut cream sizzling away. So it's, every time it starts to bubble, ugh. every time it starts to bubble, we'll just add a bit more um, chicken stock. Now, time to plate up. Well, almost. I can see this here, look at that beautiful caramelization that the coconut sugar has done. It, it hasn't really burnt, it's just the, it's just giving it such a nice crust. Goes great with the fat rendered down or the coconut. Um, so in, in, like, in Granada they don't use too much spices, their main ingredient would be nutmeg. So, or um, yeah, so nutmeg. Again, this is from um, the the trade Indians or the uh, subcontinental Indians got there, and uh, sort of bring things I like with them. That's how we get curry goat. That's how we get uh, all the different types of flatbreads around the Caribbean. You know, it's 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 kind of cool to think about. You know, I, I when I when I think about those kind of things, it's like I like thinking about the. You know, the 10 15 years after a new I I ingredient is introduced into a country. Because my dad tells me about um, a time when plantain were like readily available in Ireland in the 70s. And he always said, like, he, he's always trying to think, like, well, why, who was buying it and what were they doing? I, I could only imagine that Tesco probably had bought bulks of them and they didn't really have a separate system from Ireland and England. I don't know. Maybe there was. Maybe there was a. Uh, a Caribbean community just eating all the plantains in uh, Ireland at the time. Who knows? If anyone knows the story behind that, or just hit me up and tell me, because it's a boggle to me, but I just, I, I only have an educated guess, I don't know. So, we're going to plate up here now. I'm going to start up, I'm going to, there we go. Start up with our sweet potato mash. Look at that, with our roast garlic inside and parsley. Right. And our pork chop. Beautiful pork chop that's just listening here now. cream that has been sitting here simmering away. I'm going to bring this a bit closer now so we can all see it. That's our Calypso pork. Now, I'm going to put a few green onions over it. A bit of fresh pepper. Guys, that is a Calypso <laughs> that is a calypso pork chop and macro rundown. Guys, I'm going to leave you to it there. You've got six Ling Jing coming up showing how to make some cocktails. Uh, thank you for watching. And uh, if you have any questions, do feel free to uh, send me a DM or an email or carrier pigeon or however we're going to do it after the uh, COVID times. So uh, I wish you God bless, good luck, and uh, thank you for watching. Um, hopefully, in the next couple of months, we'll uh, get to do this. We'll get to we'll, we'll get out there into the world and uh, see each other again. So thank you very much for watching, and uh, thank you to the Taste of Dublin team for inviting me to do this. It's been pretty cool. Um, because I've been I can't even remember what happened in April, so this is something to uh, think about. Thank you so much, guys.